<laughs> yeah, it is so good to see you. And if you want to, if you want to use your phone, one of my favorite things about the touch-free environment we're trying to create is that you get to use your phone to do something amazing. And that is, you can put your camera up to this, and it will lead you to a link where you can download uh, our online worship guide and uh, message notes and prayer requests and our mobile app and all that good stuff. So I want to give you a moment to do that. And uh, while you do that, I just want to say I have missed you. So much. And if you have been attending RLC for three weeks or less, hi, <laughs> my name is Pastor Brandon, and I have been away for a little while, but it is so good to see you. I love you. I have missed you. It's probably been my busiest three weeks off I've ever had in my life, uh, but it is so good to be here and be with you guys. And while you're pulling that up, I'm going to leave that there. But I have got two uh, memes for you, my favorite that I have seen online during my time away. And so I want to give you a little joy this morning. Here's the first one, and that is accidentally Googled Pastor Yoda instead uh, of Master Yoda, and I was not disappointed. Is that not amazing? I, what's bad is I know someone who looks almost just like that. All right. Hey, here's one more. I love this. Of all the things I learned in grade school, trying to avoid cooties was the last one I expected to use. All right. Yes, absolutely. And so you can have those. Make sure you enjoy them. And if you have been with us over the past several weeks, then you know that this is the final week of our summer at RLC. And so as part of this today, we've been having theme days, and we today is representing uh, I, I Love RLC Day. That's why I've got all my RLC armbands on, which means I've got a hug for everybody in here. And so uh, if you haven't been using these, make sure you do grab one of those, because if you're someone like me that's normally not a hugger, uh, but I've missed some of you guys so much, I want to go up. I don't know how to feel about it yet. And so if you've got a green one, then just get ready, all right? But yellow one means fist bump maybe, red is ignore me completely, right? I mean, and, and I, I love it. Somebody had said they had grabbed one of each so that they, because it was different for some people, right? Like you get a red one. I don't, don't talk to me, you know, but make sure you get one of those. And today uh, we also, to celebrate, uh, it's not the end of summer, but it kind of is as a church because we move into a different season next week. Uh, we've got a free ice cream sandwich for everybody, uh, so make sure that you enjoy that. For some of you, you're going, let's go ahead and end the service now, right? Don't worry. They're going to be cold and waiting on you. Um, and I'm really excited because next week, today's going to kind of be a prequel going into it, but we're starting probably one of the most important series we've done this year at ROC, and we, we've entitled it uh, Face to Face. And that is that there are these moments, the Greek word for it is kairos moments. And it's, it's a moment in time by which history is changed. And you can look through the word of God and you can see moments in people's lives where they were one way, they experienced God in a special way, and they were never the same after that. And we're going to look at God's word and see how that has happened. And my prayer for you over the next several weeks is that you have a face-to-face -face encounter with God, a Kairos moment, so that, you know, there's so many things we could take out of 2020 with us, but my prayer is that you say that 2020, yes, some bad stuff happened, but I encountered God in such a special way that I was never the same after that. And we're going to be starting that up next week, so you want to make sure you don't miss a single week. I'm even thinking about taking one week out of the series and telling you my personal story and how God uh, changed my life when I was younger. And so it's just so many good things uh, planned. Make sure you don't miss that. But today, if you have your message notes, I want to dive into this topic, this idea of living in a noisy world. I don't know about you, but have you ever, you ever just got quiet for a second and realized just how noisy everything is around you? You ever done that? Like just like even right now, you can hear people clicking things. Uh, you can hear a beep because they forgot to uh, put their phone on vibrate. You can hear the air conditioner. You know, you can, you know, whatever. You have someone yawns. That's always the worst thing for uh, someone who's preaching is you hear someone yawn. That's the worst thing. Uh, the first year of our church, someone forgot to put their phone on vibrate and they had crickets as the sound of their ringtone. Made me feel real good that day. You know? But we, we live in such a noisy, noisy world. And the thing is, is that it really can get so noisy that it can mess us up. And the, the, the idea behind this is, is I want to tell you what happened to me uh, while I was gone. It's, I don't know if you've ever had one of these days, but it, it happened to me. And that is about two, two weeks ago, I was driving in my car with my whole family. So I have my wife in the passenger seat. I got both my girls in the back. And I even had our dog, Maggie, with me. I mean, with the whole family was going on this trip. And we're a noisy family anyway. I don't know. You are, I don't know if your family's noisy like mine. We're loud and we like it that way. Okay, that's just who we are. I got, I got two girls and they're all the way, all right? 
But this particular moment was extra noisy. Okay, let me explain it to you. Let me paint this picture. So first of all, we've got the radio on, and it's super loud. Because one of my daughters thinks it's her life's mission to share with me every song that she likes, okay? So she's like, Daddy, I want you to listen to this song. Problem is, I can't hear it because she's singing louder than the radio. Am I the only one that when I want to hear a song, I don't want you singing, okay? Because I want to hear it. And so she's like, she sings a couple of lines, and then she's like, Dad, don't you love this song? So she's trying to get my attention. And then my other daughter is, is getting even louder than her. Stop singing. I can't hear the song. And scoot over. Dad, tell her to scoot over. She's in my space. We're in this big car, but she's smothered. I don't know. I don't understand that. So we got the radio super loud. One of my daughters is singing louder than that. Dad, do you like this? The other daughter is, stop singing so loud. She's in, she's in my space. And then my wife, bless her heart, is trying to get even louder than that. I think you took a wrong turn. Do you even know where we're going? This is not the fastest way to get there. You need to turn around. And I can barely hear her. And even my dog is getting in on it. She's about to, she's, she's nosing me because she wants, she's got needs too. And she wants me to roll the window down. Okay? Everybody's got a need. And it's, it's so loud that I, I missed the turn twice because I can't hear anything. And so I did what in my house is the universal symbol of dad has had enough. And that is I got out my headphones, I put both of them in my ears, and I just got really quiet. That's the universal symbol in my house that dad's about to blow a gasket, leave him alone. Okay? And so we turned everything off for a minute because I had enough. How many has ever been in a car ride like that one, right? Yeah, so it's so loud you can't think. How many feels like 2020 is like that car ride that never ends, right? There's so many noises, even good ones, even good noises, but there's so many that it just becomes a roar. All you hear is just, just a roar, and everybody wants your attention. Everybody wants you to pay attention to what they're doing, and it just becomes just a mess, right? Well, I want to ask you the question, not, not physically, but in your life, what are the loudest voices that you're having to deal with right now? If you're taking notes, you know, analog, uh, pen and paper notes, you can see the blanks. And if you're doing it on your mobile device, you can see a place there. What are, what are some of the loudest voices in your life? Maybe they're different from mine. I got a few here as an example. What are some of the loudest voices we're having to deal with? Like, it's like some of them are maybe social media. It's just blaring loud. I think some of us have forgotten that, it, that most of social media is people's opinions, you know, and, and that opinions, you know, are, are, are like armpits. Everybody's got at least two and most of them stink, right? You know, we, we think that everything's true, right? But we, we struggle with that. Or how about the news? Can we just be honest and say that most news is biased one way or the other and, and they, they get paid for you to click and so they're going to have the, the biggest headline they can so you'll click it. And so the world's going to end by noon. Click here to find out more, right? And so you've got those things trying to get your attention. And you've got family issues. Some people, all of this, COVID and everything else, that's just a drop in the bucket. There's some family issues that's been going on. Just in our church alone, there's so many things, people having surgeries and people passing away and new babies being born and, and relationship issues. And then on top of that, you got the thing of, should I take my kids and put them back in school or should we do online only? And then there's the, the thing between all of that. And then I wonder, we may be getting laid off over here. And there's all these family concerns and it's so loud. And then you got the fear. I don't know. What about the murder hornets? They coming back, they disappear. Does that mean they're doing a sneak attack? I don't know what's going on. You know, there's a coin shortage. Lord, don't let us run out of toilet paper again. There's all these different, like legit though, anxieties and fears. How about celebrities? Can we pause and put myself in this same thing? Why do we care what people who play pretend for a living say? I mean, you know, we pay them millions of dollars to, to pretend to be somebody else in a movie, and then they come out and we're like, that must be true. No. Or they're really good at basketball, football, or hockey, but they, we think they know about our life. But we do. We pay so much attention to it. How about expectations? Having to have all the answers. Having to have it all figured out. Politics. Oh, my God goodness, you know, just, just especially as we get closer and closer to November, you know, the politics are getting louder and everybody wants your attention. And, you know, people are saying this is possibly the, the biggest election in the history of the world. And, and, and here's the thing, maybe it is, maybe it is, but they said the same thing about the one four years ago. And then the one before years before that, it's always been the most important election ever. Okay. And then you've got COVID concerns. Should I wear a mask? Should I not wear a mask? And then we fight about it. And then should I be six feet or is 5.5 feet close enough? You know, what do I need to do? There's just all these voices are so 
loud. And maybe there's a voice in your life that's even louder than all of those. And here's the thing. What's the loudest voice in your life? And what do we do about it? What do we do when all the voices get so loud that it just becomes a roar and we miss some turns in our life? What do we do? Well, the big idea of this message is this, and that is that when the voices get loud, make sure God's voice is louder. That's the trick, because we can't, we can't get rid of all these voices. We can't get rid of our family, all right? Some of us are going, are you sure? <laughs> you know, no, we can't get rid of our family. There's some decisions we're going to have to make. But how do we manage them so that when the voices get loud, God's voice is even louder? Because here's the thing, isn't that true? That's easy, right? To say that, how do we do it? That's the million-dollar question, of course, Of course, if you're a follower in Christ, of course, the general's voice needs to be louder than the soldier's. But how do we do it? Well, the good thing is, is God's word teaches us. There's a a process in God's word over and over again, and we can especially see it at a particular place in Jesus' life where he teaches us that when the voices get loud, God's voice is even louder. So I want to show you a place in scripture where the voices were getting so loud for Jesus that he needed to make sure that God's voice was louder, and he did something very specific. But I want to give you some background before we get to this so you'll understand. What we're going to read, you can find it in Matthew. You can also find it in the book of John. But when we find this, it's in the third year of Jesus' public ministry. His popularity is at a fever pitch. There's uh, between seven and 15,000 people who are following Jesus at this point. And in that time, that's like a small city moving with Jesus. Because what he would do is he would go from community to community, Capernaum, and then he would go to Bethsaida, and then he would go to uh, Bethlehem, and then Jerusalem, and all these different places. And he would heal people, he would teach, he would debate the religious leaders, and he would collect people <laughs> as he would go. I mean, not, not on purpose, but if, think about it. If you were blind and then someone heals you, I'm going where he's going, all right? And so he just slowly is collecting between seven and 15,000 people when you consider women and children and all that. And so they're there, and this big group of people, they get in this one place, and when they get there, they run out of food. They don't, they don't have any food. And so Jesus works this amazing miracle, and he tells everybody to sit down, and he takes five loaves of bread and two small fish, and he feeds all of them. Because we know the story is 5,000, but that was just counting men. It doesn't include their families. That's why they say between seven and 15,000 people. And so that's 15,000 voices that all wanted Jesus' attention. Because don't you remember me, Jesus? You're the one, you, you healed me, so we're, we're close, right? We got it like this. And so all 15,000 think that they have Jesus' ear, and it's just getting louder and louder. And now they got free food, so come on, it's getting even louder. And the book of John says that at that point, they started wanting to force Jesus to become king. They wanted to start a revolution, start a revolt. They'd already done it a few years before with the Maccabees. And so now they're like, here's the next one. And they wanted to force Jesus into declaring himself king and starting all this. And Jesus finally said, enough. And the Bible says this. It says, immediately after this. So after he fed everybody and after they started talking like they wanted him to be king. After this, Jesus insisted that the disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. And night fell while he was there alone. And meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land. For a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. And about 3 a.m., 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. And so notice what was happening. There was all these people, and just to kind of put them in categories, he had, he had seekers all around him. Hey, Jesus, listen, I know you're busy but man, I really need this healing. Can, can, can you do this for me? Do you, do you have just a few minutes? Then you've got his followers. Hey, Jesus, what do I do with the leftover bread and leftover fish? Hey, what do I need to do about this person? You got this going. Then you got the unbelievers, the people who are constantly probing and asking Jesus questions and trying to get him with the, you know, the chicken or the egg, impossible to answer questions, constantly trying to see if they could trip him up in some kind of way. Then you got outright enemies. And we know that because when Jesus was, was betrayed and he's on trial, there were people who said, hey, I was there, and he said this. So they were looking for ways. So Jesus has constantly got this swirl around him of, of people constantly doing things. And what he teaches us is that when those voices get loud, make sure God's voice is louder. And we're going to look at what we just read and find he did three things. And for some of us, this is what we want, but in the world we're living in, It's so hard to stay there. And so if you find yourself 
overcrowded by all the other voices, it's okay. Don't get mad at yourself. Don't get down. Don't give up. It's just time to course correct. And I want to tell you, this is so simple, but it's not simplistic at all. And I'll tell you, in my life, I find myself constantly having to course correct and constantly, and I find myself getting off again and come back again to it. And so I have to look to God's word and say, okay, God, the voices have gotten super loud. And Jesus shares with us three things. The first thing he did when the voices got loud is he did this. He said, Jesus set proper boundaries. Jesus set some proper boundaries. There, there's all these people, and they're all wanting his attention. And now, they're, now, they're, now they got free food, they really want his attention. And, and so he says this. He says, immediately after this, Jesus insisted, like, like drawing a line in the sand, he insisted, disciples, get in the boat and go over to the other side. And he sent everybody home. Notice, he didn't, it didn't say that he asked everybody if it was okay. He, he didn't wait for them to put, pro no, no, he took responsibility and said, no, 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 the voices are getting loud, it's time to stop. Even the good ones, even the disciples, hey, listen, I love you, but go away. <laughs> go, go get in the boat, go to the other side of the lake. Well, Jesus, how are you going to get to the other side of the lake? Don't worry, I'm going to walk on some water, it's going to be amazing, I'll figure that out, I need you to go, all right? And then all the other people, Jesus, we want you to be our king, great. Go home, all right? I need, I need, I need some, some, some boundaries here. You know, we're getting a little bit too close. And I want to ask you this question. What are some of the loudest voices and noises in your life? And here's the thing. Maybe they're the loudest voices because you're feeding them the most. It got to a fever pitch after Jesus started feeding these people to where now he has to send them home. And maybe the voices that are the loudest are because they're the ones you pay the most attention to. And it's time that they, they were in a good place, but they've gotten unhealthy. And it's time to put some boundaries in place. Because, I mean, it reminds me of the story this grandfather and this grandson are, are talking. And the grandfather said, inside of me are two wolves. One is kind and generous and thoughtful. And the other is mean and vengeful and spiteful. And they're constantly fighting one another. And the grandson said, oh, no, what are you going to do? And he said, don't worry. I always know which one's going to win. It's the one that I feed the most. And for some of us, maybe the voices are loud because we're constantly feeding the voices. And we're, we're hoping that eventually it'll be enough. Eventually it'll be enough. And it'll never be enough. The Bible says this. It says, above everything else is to guard your heart. Because out of it is everything else. Everything flows from it. So it's not saying ask permission. It's saying, no, no, your responsibility is to put some boundaries. Because can I tell you, Mark Zuckerberg is not going to turn Facebook off for a weekend. Hey, you guys are getting obsessed, so I'm going to turn it off. No, no, he's not going to do that, okay? As a matter of fact, they got all this technology to make sure that you are there. I mean, how many times have you done this? I did this the other day. I said apple pie three times. Seriously pulled up my, my phone, and there was an apple pie ad. It was creepy, okay? And it's just, they constantly, how about this? The news cycle is not going to stop. Hey, listen, I think all you guys are getting a little worried, so we're just going to have good news for the weekend. That's not going to happen. You think the politicians are going to call it quits for a weekend because you're getting obsessed? No, you've got to put those boundaries. And Jesus was like, this far, no further. Even the good voices are too loud because I can't hear the voice of God in my life. And what I'm having to learn in my life is that through Christ's grace, I love all but I only walk with a few. Like, I love all of it. I love social media. It's how I keep up with my family. It's, I, I'm telling you, people's uh, meme game, their jokes are hilarious. I love all that kind of stuff. I love the, I'm kind of a news guy. I, I love all this different stuff. But in my life, I'm realizing that there's some things I've had to say no to. Can I tell you this and be honest with you? There's some relationships I've had to say no to. Hey, listen, I love you. We're friends. But for a little while, I got to put some distance. I had to have that conversation just this past week with a pastor friend of mine who I love him, but he's so negative. And he was constantly bringing me down. I said, listen, I love you, but I got to take a break from you for right now <laughs> because your voice is getting too loud. You're making me anxious, okay? Because I love you, but I can't walk with you right now. Maybe there's some TV shows. Maybe there's some things. Maybe there's some, some news channels. Maybe there's some social media accounts. One of the greatest thing about social media is the unfollow button because they don't even know, but you don't see them anymore, all right? Because it's too much, and you can't hear the voice of God because the other voices have gotten so loud. I say, listen, right now, I love you, but I can't walk with you. 
And that's what Jesus was saying. Listen, disciples, I love you, but I need you to go because I can't walk with you right now. I need to turn down these other voices so that I can hear the voice of God. That's the first thing that Jesus teaches us is the first thing you got to do is turn some of those voices down. What's the loudest voice in your life? And if it drowns out the voice of God, maybe it's time to put a boundary. I love you, but I can't let you become more powerful than the voice of God in my life. The second thing Jesus did is he teaches us to turn down those voices. And then Jesus was a self-feeder. Jesus, he, he, he took care of himself. I wanna, what, what I mean by that is, is he had a relationship with God himself. The Bible says this, is that he told everybody to go home. And I love that so much. Listen, I love you, but, but go away. And then he went up into the hills by himself to pray. And night fell and he was there alone. Notice it didn't say, he was like, hey, listen, Matthew and John, I need you to go with me. Matthew, you've got a really good singing voice, so I need you to sing a worship song for me. And I know, John, you've been working on that Bible study. I need you to teach me. And listen, there's nothing wrong with that. We, we need to pray for one another. The Bible says confess your faults to one another so you can be healed. And this says to not forsake assembling together. We need this. But you can't live off of somebody else's relationship with God. I can't stay strong if I'm only depending on you to know God for me. And a self-feeder, this is my definition, it, I made it up, but it, it works for me. A self-feeder is a growing follower of Christ whom, while needing the fellowship of others, primarily grows from their personal relationship with God. In other words, what that means is, is that if we get to a situation where we can't meet here on Sunday, my relationship with God doesn't fall apart. Why? Because my relationship with God is not founded on your relationship with God. It's founded on my experience with God. And so what that means is, is we've got to get to the place where we grow in our relationship so that we're not babes in our faith, but we're mature believers. And so Jesus was like, look, I need y'all to get away, and then I'm going to go to God myself. So we get to the place to where we say, hey, I need you to pray for me. That's already assuming I'm already praying too, because I can't stand on your relationship with God. We need each other, but the primary way we grow is our personal relationship with God. The Bible teaches that there's different levels to maturity in Christ. It says this in Hebrews. It says, you have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you, again, the basics about God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between what is right and what is wrong. So God, God's word teaches that our relationship with him is just like growing up. You start off as a baby, but the hope is that you grow. And here's the thing, there's a season when you're a baby, and that's great. I mean, you're a baby. You, you walk around with your spiritual pull-ups on, you make a, ma a mess everywhere, and it's fine. You know, you, you make mistakes, you, you, you stink a little bit spiritually, but it's okay. You're a baby, you're going to grow. I mean, nobody gets upset when they see a little toddler walk around, they got their pull-ups on, pacifier in their mouth, they, uh, they got the blanket over their shoulder making weird noises. That's okay. You're a, that's a baby, it's what they're supposed to do. But imagine a 30-year-old doing that. <laughs> Then it's creepy. <laughs> it's a little weird, all right? You, I, I'm, I'm going to need a little distance, all right? And, but that's the thing is some of us, if we're not careful, we, when, when we're Christians, we, we, we get older, but we don't mature any. So we've been a Christian for a while, but we still got our pull-ups on. And in the season we live in right now, we've got to grow because the noises are so loud. And we've got to make sure we can go to God ourselves. And so maybe you're in that place. It, it reminds me of... I mean, come on, y'all, y'all need to pray for me because over the past several weeks, my oldest daughter turned 13 years old. I now officially have a teenager, and it's going to be the greatest season. I see some of you parents smiling already. It's, in Jesus' name, it's going to be the greatest season of our lives. It's going to be great. And I was teasing her a little bit, and I, I wouldn't tell her she was 13. I kept telling her she was 12 plus 1. All right, you're still my baby, 12 plus 1, 12 plus 1. And, and I had to stop because she looked at me one day and she said, Dad, you want me to be a baby forever, don't you? And I had to think about that. And I went, no, actually, I don't want you to be, I want you to grow up. And it's not just because I want her to move out one day in Jesus' name. <laughs> that's there, okay, but that's not the main reason. But I got to thinking about it. And I finally, I told her, I said, listen, now listen, you're always going to be my baby. You're always going to be my, my little girl, 
but I can't wait for you to grow up. Because the greatest adventures of life are after you grow up and you're mature. You, you understand responsibility, to take care of yourself, to be an independent adult. I can't wait for you to graduate high school and maybe go to college and experience that and then you know, be able to drive and be able to go back and forth and all the different places you can go. And then maybe in Jesus' name you find that special with someone and, and they, you get married and then have your own family. I can't imagine anything better. And maybe you own your own home or you, just, you have, you have a, a, a job that you enjoy. The, the greatest adventures happen when you grow up, right? And, and, I, and I wonder for some of us if God is saying the same thing. He said, now listen, you're always going to be my baby. You're always going to be my little girl, my little boy, but I can't wait for you to grow. Some of the greatest adventures of being a Christ follower after you grow up, because you know, I no longer have to worry if your faith is going to fall apart while I'm working on some things, and, and you don't get discouraged with everything that comes at you because you've learned of my faithfulness and you've learned how to grow. And Some of the greatest adventures of, the, of following Christ happen after you grow a little while, and I wonder if God is saying that to some of us. It's time to pull down some of the other noises, raise up my voice because I got so many things I want to do, but I need you to grow a little bit so you can handle it. And if you're honest, maybe you would say that your relationship with God has been struggling a little bit. I want to give you a Bible reading program and you can pull your, you can take a snapshot of this and look it up on your YouVersion app. And, and maybe, maybe to turn some of the voices down in the morning, instead of reaching for your phone to check Facebook, what if you reached for your phone and you read a Bible a verse for the day? What, what, if, what if instead of checking the news, what if you did this first? And you said, God, I'm going to start with your word because I'm turning the other voices down and I'm turning your voice up. And this will lead you through from anxiety to peace. You can read God's word every day because I'm growing myself. I'm not dependent on your relationship for me to get where I need to be, but I'm growing because I want to experience all the adventures that God has, but I can't while I'm still in my pull-ups. So I've got to grow Myself. And that's what Jesus had, had, was able to do is when the voices got loud, 15,000 different voices, he said, listen, disciples, I love you, but I need you to go. Everybody else, we want you to be our king. Great, go home, all right? I got to set some boundaries, and then I need to turn up the voice of God, and I can do that myself because I've learned how to have a relationship with God myself. And then what happens, what always happens, is that then Jesus re-engaged. He re-engaged. Because watch what happens. The Bible said that he got by himself, and he's experiencing his father for himself, and he's getting close to God. He's getting his priorities back where they need to be. Not saying that they weren't already, but they were right there. He's, he's, he's remembering why I'm here. He's getting all this going. And while he's doing that, it says, meanwhile, other people were hurting. The disciples were in trouble far away. For a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. And I wonder how much that would describe so many people around us right now. They're minding their own business, and out of nowhere, strong winds called the political election of 2020. Strong winds called COVID-19. Strong winds called, do I keep my kids in school or do I take, send them at home? Strong winds called layoffs. Strong winds called another stimulus check. What do I do with it? Do I pay bills or do I save it for something else? Oh, strong winds have come out of nowhere and they're doing the best they can not to sink, but they're fighting and the waves are heavy and they're not going away. And the problem is, is that when when the noises get loud and, and it's, it's, just, it's just a roar after a while, you begin to not see people the way you're supposed to. I was like back at the beginning of the message, I was telling you that you know, the noises were so loud that I missed my turn twice because it was just such a roar that I was getting confused and, and I couldn't think straight. And finally I was like, ugh, you know. Some of us in life, the noises have gotten so loud that we no longer see people the way we should see them. We see, a, we see people as, as victims and villains and everybody's against me and, and we're arguing about things and, and what should be someone's preference now becomes whether they love Jesus or not. Like if you wear a mask, I'm against you because I don't want to wear one and then I don't want to wear one, I'm against you uh, the other way around and then, and then if I want to send my kids to school, well, then you're not protecting my kids and then the other way around and then you've got the, the social things and, the, and the, the racism things and all these different things and we just sit, seem like we see enemies everywhere because we're looking through our brokenness. We're looking through the, the loud noises. 
When the truth is, is all around us are not villains. All around us are hurting people who are fighting strong winds and they're fighting heavy waves. And what they need is not us to set them straight. What they need is someone to go to them. Right in the middle of their issue, to go to them and help them. But you can't see people as hurting if the noises are too loud. Can I tell you that hurting people hurt people? And the people that you think you're against right now, if you turn the other voices down and you turn up the voice of God, what you're going to find is you don't see victims and villains. You see hurting people that see Jesus. And you're the answer. God's word says this. It says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. And in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Is it, is it possible that right in the middle of all this difficulty is when God wants to do some of his greatest work. But the enemy's plan for us is to get us so distracted by all the noises and all the things and all the stuff that we stop seeing people as broken and hurting. We start seeing people as our, as our enemy. And so we're not reaching out anymore, but we're trying to hold it all in because we're so afraid of what they're gonna do to us because we've forgotten that God's power is stronger than that. And what we realize is that through Christ's strength, I can make a difference in my world. Do you know what God's plan is for the broken people at your job? You. You know what God's plan is for the broken people in your family? You. But the thing is, is so many times we get so distracted that we can't see past our own brokenness. And I want to tell you, if you're there, that's your, if that's your, your place right now, I want you to know it's okay. That's the enemy's plan is to try to do that. But don't stay there. I can't tell you how many times, I, I was one of those people that back in March when they started talking about having to change things up a little bit and, you know, and, 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 and the COVID thing started happening and, and we had to cancel um, our, our in-person services. I was one of those who said, ah, two weeks and we'll be back, it'll be fine, you know. And I was shocked when the third week happened and the fourth week happened and the fifth week happened. And I went through this thing where I was just, just, just ingesting all of the news and, uh, and all, the, all the, the Facebook stuff. And I, before I knew it, spiritually, it was so loud that when I would go to pray, all I would hear is the news and all the horrible things and all the things and stuff. And you know what, you know what hit me? Is someone in our church came to me and they said, Pastor, can, can we talk? Absolutely. I sit down and I was, I was waiting on them to, to tell me all about, you know, what they'd read on the news and what, what Facebook was doing and, and all this stuff. And they sat down and they said, you know, I'm so broken right now. I got this personal issue, this thing that was going on in their life. And I just need Jesus. And it was like a slap in my face. I was so busy paying attention to all the noises that I forgot that Jesus was the answer. I was so ashamed. I knew he was, but I wasn't paying attention because of all the other noises. And I'll be honest with you, I ended up having them pray for me because I'd gotten out of whack a little bit. And I can't tell you how many times over the past two or three months I've had to come back to this over and over again. And I have to start looking at it and go, okay, is there anything louder than the voice and the presence of God in my life? If it is, it's time for me to put it away. I've had to put social media away for a season. I had to delete my YouTube app. I had to just to say no to this stuff because it was getting too loud. Because I started putting all my faith in that instead of my faith in Jesus. And what I've learned in my life is that when the voices get loud, make sure God's voice is louder. And the reason why is it's not just about you. But there's people fighting storms. Everyone's got a private battle that no one else knows about. And what if you're the miracle that they're waiting on? And the enemy's plan is to keep you so busy with all the noises that you can't see hurting people. But if we can turn down the other voices, and turn up the voice of God, then we'll see all around us. We're not in a land full of victims and villains. 
We're in a land full of hurting people. And we've got the answer. I don't, I don't see the end. I see an amazing opportunity. Because I see a world that is ripe for Jesus. I, see, I don't see hopelessness. I see opportunity. Because Jesus is still the answer. He's still the hope of the world. And I need to be reminded of that. And maybe in here today, you need to remember that God is for you and not against you. He is more for you than you can imagine. You're probably doing better than you realize. You know why? Because you got up one more day. And God has not changed his mind about you. And I'm telling you, the better days are ahead of us if you choose it. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the opportunity to be in moments like this when, Holy Spirit, you are moving in our hearts and in our minds. And Holy Spirit, if if we're honest, there are some of us in here that we didn't even realize how loud the other voices got until right now when we think about it and and, and our eyes are open to it and realize, oh man, we're paying so much attention to everything but you. We're sorry for that. Thank you for bringing it to our attention and we give it back to you. And though we know that this is not a one and done, it's gonna take over and over, reminding ourselves constantly, but I pray that you will take us on the journey of remembering that you are for us and not against us. And this is not the end, but it is a brand new beginning because you are able to do the impossible. And we lift our eyes and we see your faithfulness. We see that you are for us. Right now your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. I don't know what the loudest voice is in your life. Maybe maybe you didn't even realize how loud it was until we got to talking about this. And that, that's just the Holy Spirit revealing to you something that's maybe putting a wedge between you and the Lord. And maybe you just need to take a moment and go, you know what, God, I, I need to put this down for a season. I need to create some boundaries for a season. I need to start picking up your word instead of my, my smartphone for a season because I'm just getting so wrapped up in everything else but you. I, I need to maybe say, say no to this relationship for right now. I put some boundaries because it's, it's getting in the way of you. Whatever it is, I just want to give you a moment between you and the Lord to be really honest and say, God, I'm ready to turn some of the other voices down and turn your voice up because all around me, the harvest is ready. Help me to see it. Help me to see that hurting people hurt people, but joy comes in the morning through the presence of the Lord. I just want to give you that moment between you and the Lord, maybe to have that conversation. And while you're doing that, maybe you're in here, maybe you're watching online, and the honest truth is, is that you need Jesus in your life. Maybe, maybe you didn't even realize it happened, but somehow or another, he went from being number one to number two to number three, and he kept falling down your list as more and more things kept taking his, pla- his place, and now you, you don't even know where he's at on your list. And can I just be honest and tell you that if he's not Lord of all, then he's really not Lord at all. Maybe right now the best thing that you could do is just to recommit your life to Christ. And say, God, I just want to start over again as if I was starting fresh and new. If that's you, I want to lead you in a prayer that's going to say that. I want to put, I want to put Jesus back as number one in my life. Say it with me like this. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for speaking to me. Right now, Jesus, come into my life. Wash away all my sin. I put you as the priority in my life. Be my Lord, my Savior, and my best friend. In Jesus' name. Now, God, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, whether they're here or watching online, that you will do what only you can do. You are the way maker and the miracle worker. And right now, you'll go on the inside of us. You will wash us clean of anything that would hinder the goodness of God to flow in our life. And help us, Lord, to open our eyes. And when different voices get loud, we don't get discouraged. We just move them to the side. Make your voice louder in us so that we can see that this is our time. This is our moment when we can make a difference. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Praise the Lord.